Hi everyone, this is Srivatsa from Informatica Global Customer Support. Today I will be making a short video presentation on Power Exchange for Netisa. Changes that have taken place in version 9.x and how it is different from 8.x. So the agenda for the day would be we would go over the changes to Power Exchange for Netisa in version 9.1 and above. Then we will go through some issue scenarios that you might encounter when you configure our exchange for Netisa in 9.1. Then the do's and don'ts in configuring Netisa target. Then the workarounds and precautions to fix Netisa issues. So let's start with the changes to Power Exchange for Netisa. Power Exchange for Netisa is not an application connection anymore. Sources and targets have become relational connections. And we have a new connection type called Netisa that is available in the workflow manager. So now you can use either ODBC or Netisa connection type for non-bulk mode of loading or extraction. But for bulk mode of extraction or loading, the bulk reader or writer requires a Netisa connection type. So one more additional thing that has been implemented is the target connection group. So if you have multiple instances of the same target and they all have the same DSM, that is the data source name, then we have implemented something called the target connection group. This was implemented to make sure that we account for any serialization errors that occurs in Netisa. So we will issue the statements as begin transaction, then all the insert update statements inside, and then end transaction. So even if there's failure in one of those, we will roll over the transaction and make sure that the data doesn't get corrupted. So one more thing to notice is if you are migrating to uh, different versions of Netisa, as I have pointed out here, especially 4.5.4.3.6 and later versions, 4.6.8.3.2 and Netisa 6.0.2 and later, they have provided a relaxed isolation level for serialization. So when they say relaxed isolation level, they make it repeatable G. Before it used to have a table level loss. Now you can force it to have a row level loss. In spite of that, you might encounter some issues, which we'll address later in this presentation. So now power center sessions have a null value property. It's very important property because now we have different options on how to move the data. Your empty string can become null. Your null string can become empty. And now there are lots of different configurations that are possible now, depending on the flag you set and depending on the null value property you set. So that is another presentation in our NPAS support videos for this configuration of different flags and how to handle this null value property. So I would strongly suggest that you should have a uh, you should go through the presentation and understand how it can affect your data. So, as I had mentioned, there are the additional flags which are provided to manipulate how empty strings and null values are handled. Now, let's move to the issue scenarios that I was talking about. So, previously, if you were having the sessions run properly in your ADAR text version, there is a possibility that you might encounter some issues when you migrate to 9.1 or above version. Especially for mappings that are implementing slowly changing dimensions 2 and slowly changing dimensions 1 and 2. Some of your mappings may have just a CD2 implementation. Then there are some issue scenarios. Then if you have both a CD1 and a CD2, then also you have a, a certain issue scenario. And if you have a mapping that doesn't implement any CD1 or CD2, but you have multiple updates or deletes on the same instance of the target, then you might issue. Then you might face some issues too. So let's see what to do and what not to do in configuring the system from 9.x version onwards. You can insert the property called ignore key constraint and then update. And then you can insert with that ignore key constraint option checked and delete. But if you have 
insert and update method as your session would fail. Finally, if you have insert and delete, without the ignore ignition uh, ignore instruction, it will fail. So if you see in the session properties, you will have a duplicate row handling property set by default. If you just have that property set and that did not check the box, ignore key constraint, then you might enter issue. So what are the don'ts? You cannot have two updates on the same target. You cannot insert, as I mentioned earlier, just with duplicate row handling and no ignore key constraint on an update, and then insert with only duplicate row handling and delete and then update and delete on the same target. So all these issue scenarios I pointed to, and also the do's and don'ts, are owing to the fact that Redisa has implemented a serialization isolation level, and the way we uh, fire the uh, queries and the fire the transactions, uh, uh, it results in serialization error. So it's a limitation on the side of Redisa, but they have certain constraints on what could be done on a particular table and that prevents simultaneous access of the table. So now we will see what could be done. When you do an insert, you can select insert or update as insert in the session property. There, also select the ignore key constraint. For insert target. When you have an instance where you do an update, you can select update as update or update else insert. So you can use a maximum of one update for any target along with one insert. So in case of SCD2 and SCD1 together in a mapping, you will have one insert and update for SCD2 implementation and another update for SCD1. So which is a, a perfect case for having failures. So there is some property that could be set to override this, but there is a limitation to that too. We will address that in the later part of the presentation. So when you do a delete, then you can have only maximum of one delete per table target. So when you set these properties, you have to make sure that you uncheck the other properties. When you configure for bulk modding, loading, bulk mode loading, you will have insert, delete, and update as update you may want to make sure that you remove the insert and delete and just have the update as update. So similar things apply for other insert and delete. So now let's look at the workarounds and precautions we have that we, need to, that we need to take. So the workaround that we have provided is disabling the Netisa TCG flag. The way it is done is you go to the cust you go to the custom process from session custom property. Um, not the session custom property, but the integration service custom property, and set the disable Netisa TCG flag equal to yes. Unfortunately, this property wouldn't work if you set it in the session custom property. So you have to set in the integration service and recycle the integration service. So setting this flag is not going to affect the performance or uh, the successful run of any other mapping. This would be taken into account only during run of the Netisa session. So what this flag does, it removes the option of having all the uh, BMLs that are run for a target under a single transaction. So previously we would say begin transaction, insert, update, update, then end transaction, and then there's an issue we roll over the transaction, but here now we remove that option. So either you can set this flag or what you could do is you can configure a separate data source name for each instance of the target. So this is one thing that has to be done from the power center. Then next thing that has to be done is you need to go to the Netisa database and there is this configuration file under slash nz slash data.1.0 which might change depending on the version that you have slash postgres equal dot com file. You have to set a property called serializable equal to false. And as I had mentioned earlier, this option is available only in certain versions of Netisa. So once this is done, now Netisa can operate at a um, lesser isolation level, that is in the repeatable read. Now there will be no table loss. So if I have multiple updates, it won't prevent me from firing multiple updates unless 
the other update is going to modify a row that is already being modified. So previously, if you have one update followed by another update, it used to fail, saying serialization error. Now it lets you do the update, but then it has a row level lock now. It has changed the table level lock to row level lock. Similar situation will happen when you have a var class in update. So it will have a range of values, and the range of rows would be locked. And if you have another update that is going to write over that, then you will have issues again. So this is a typical case where you have both STD1 and STD2 implemented in the same mapping. And you might encounter error even after setting all these flags, going to the way that is our database works. So in that case, you may want to retain your STD2 mapping, STD2 pipeline, where you have insert with ignore key constraint and then an update. This will update the previous row, maintain it still. And then you have to create a newer pipeline to implement STD1. So that is uh, something that I was talking about earlier that I would address here. Then what are the precautions? Uh, as I mentioned, the serialization table level lock, no changes to row level lock. So what does it end, uh, entail? You may have to check with your NetEase DB and see how does it affect um, anything that is done down the line. Since NetEase uh, by default is an uh, database that is used for reporting extensively and not as an operational database, um, it might have some uh, effect on how uh, how it performs when you pull the reports from these tables and the data from these tables. So you may want to work with your NetEase DB and see if such changes are allowed in your environment. Then the other point that I had mentioned already, your multiple updates might still fail if one update is to be issued on the same row that another update is being run on. So these are some of the query uh, KBs that you may want to uh, go through for configuring your NetEase sessions. These are the typical errors that you might run into when you have uh, mapping with multiple instances of the same target. So the KB is 109374, and the uh, 10105 and 117938. I hope the information that we provided here was useful to you. We would love to hear from you. We would love to hear more valuable comments and updates and feedback from you. You can provide us your comments at supportvideos at informatica.com.